Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome on in to Clay Share Con Day 3. That's right. I'm Jessica Putnam Phillips, the founder of Clay Share and Clay Share Con. And we are going to throw in altar bowls. And if you've been watching with us, you would have just seen me throw textured tumblers. Then we had an amazing studio tour from Janet K. Christian. And all I can say is, wow. And that's the word from the video. That's all everybody could say was, wow. She has an amazing studio over in Spain. And thank you so much for sharing it with us, Janet. We really, really appreciate it. It's, it's really a lovely workspace. You, and you're very good at organizing. If you ever um, want to come to Vermont and hang out with me, you can help me organize my studio. <laughs> All right, so we're going to alter bowls. We're going to be throwing a little bigger than these right here, but I wanted to show you they can be any size you want. And I actually have to get up out of my seat to show you the glazes on this. These are Amico glazes, and I don't think, hold on, I want to adjust that light. I think you need to have better lighting to really, this one right here, that is, this is, um, Green, this is, I have to think about matcha, matcha chino glaze from Amico with smoky Merlot on top and a band of, text, of uh, tourmaline right in there. And then this one is Sai chino from Amico with the tourmaline on the top. How great is that? We're going to do an Amico glazing video later, but um, look at that. Oh, love this one. Uh, this is one that's just sitting there and uh, I'm hiding it from my daughter because she'll steal it. <laughs> so I'm going to show you, we're going to do two bowls. I'm going to show you how to alter two bowls. We're going to throw two bowls. Um, it's really, really, really simple. I do have a full length class on throwing and altering bowls where I show a few different ways of doing it. And we've done a few live broadcasts in the past, so it's going to be good. And hello, everybody. Do I have one of the red ribs? how the bowl ribs I do have some of the red bowl ribs I don't use them I don't have a red one no I don't I want I, I want one I don't use it because I don't have one I have a red rib and I do have a yellow bowl rib I have one in a yellow or no I have the green that's the most um stiff I don't know what I got all I know is we're gonna throw some bowls <laughs> The green one is very stiff and I don't um, love it. So what I need is to, oh my, anybody see what I do with my clay? With my, um, you want to switch over to this camera here? And s do you know what I do with my check, sponge? Check your focus on, okay. on two folks. All right, we'll check the focus. You want to roll there? Yep. And then Kevin can figure out, where did I put my sponge? Did anybody see it? Sorry, this happens in the studio. Sponges get lost. Do you see it? Is it in my bowl? Anybody watching see it? <laughs> All right. What did I do with my sponge? Go to grab me another one from my hand building cart. I have more than one sponge. We will not be stopped. It doesn't matter what it is. I'll use it. Thank you. <laughs> it's a little dirty. Yeah, is that weird? Very strange. I'm just cleaning this one out. I used it to wipe back black underglaze and... Although I washed it out in between, it had a little staining on it. So I'm going to turn the wheel back on, get the bat wet. This is a Studio Pro Bat, one of their Medex bats. Um, we're doing a prize of Studio Pro Bats, and they're doing a special right now. They have a bunch of different bats. They have these Medex ones. They have the Studio bat Pro Bat Saver system. And then they have these square plastic bats, some, which are a really nice bat. I am partial to throwing on a wooden style bat. So I don't love plastic bats, but if you like plastic bats, Studio Pro's got some great ones. This is two and a half pounds of clay. And just like I smacked my little one on, I'm smacking my big piece on. So if you watch my textured tumblers, we smack the clay on. You do the same here. And it mostly centers it. It's not completely centered, but it's pretty close. All right, let's go ahead and center this. This is a cool jug. Yeah, that's a coil throne piece I made in my gas kiln, that one that's 
right down there folks are asking about if that's the one um, I used to make a lot of really large sculptural vases and um, garden forms ages ago so many years ago all right so I didn't really talk through but we're you know compressing so we can cone up and you will find that the faster you go when you're centering the easier it is yeah I see everybody wants to know but below my tray table that is glazed with chino glazes with an iron oxide brush painting that is a piece that out of all the ones I made I've only kept two and that's one I kept the rest of that work has long been bought and gone to new homes but that's um, I mean those pieces I made 15 years ago back when I wasn't doing I really wasn't doing any electric firing I was mostly doing gas kiln it's not weird to lose things in the studio you do it all the time it's weird I'll have it with me do I have a jug class um, that one's actually so this is a that it's giant it's not a jug it's a vase I don't have a jug class a wheel thrown jug I will have a whole bunch of new wheel thrown classes after my surgery and I have recovered until then I'll be bringing people in to do workshops on clay share that are wheel throwing based so you'll see a lot more wheel throwing workshops than you will hand building um, only because I'll be recovered enough to hand build, but I won't be recovered enough to wheel throw. Although, if someone is a hand builder and they want to do a workshop, I'm not going to say no. And it's not that I'm avoiding any uh, hand builders. It's just I know there'll be a severe lack of wheel throwing for a while. All right, so we're going to open this up. And we're going down um, about half, leaving half an inch at the bottom. About that. And then we're going to pull back. But as I pull back, I'm actually not pulling straight back, I'm actually kind of coming up a little bit. It's not a half an inch down there. It's mm, little more than a quarter, three eighths. It has to be thicker. We are gonna trim a lot away on bowls, a lot. You've been liking Adam Field's uh, suggestion for using the foam from the Orton cone box. Yes, that's, that's a good suggestion. So I am going to set the floor here. I'm just compressing it. And what I do in the bottom of my bowl, so we were talking about a bowl rib. I'm actually just going to use, you don't need a bowl rib. I find bowl ribs get in the way when I have used them. I'm just going to use my red rib and I'm going to come down the side and I'm just going to go in and compress and smooth that all out. So I make this beautiful rounded bowl so that when you're eating or serving from it, you scoop nicely. All right, now we set the bottom. I'll have to refine it a few times before it's completed, but now we're gonna pull the side. Do I have a garden sculpture class? We have a did I do a garden? I have done some garden sculpture classes. We have butterfly feeder, we have bird bath, we have bird feeder, um, we did garden flowers. I will have more coming and we have Maria Sampson. We don't have her workshop up yet for signups, but that will be up soon and that is in April and she's gonna teach you how to make whimsical garden stacks. So if you've ever wanted to make garden sculpture, Maria's workshop will be perfect for you. So we're just pulling up the side. This is gonna be more like a ramen bowl, I think. Deep ramen bowl. And then we're gonna thin it out a little bit. My clay is a little dry, a little drier than it normally is. I like a really wet clay to throw with, but I've been keeping my clay next to my heater. <laughs> which you don't want your clay to freeze so that's good but um, it's drying my clay out all right I'm just using the rib to scrape this and let's check our inside do I always weigh my clay I do I have a scale a kitchen scale right next to my wedging table and I will just always weigh it now 
it's when I'm teaching a class or doing a demo because I want to make sure I know you're going to ask so I want to make sure it's, I have the measurement exact um, when I'm just throwing for me if I'm just going to make some mugs I like one and a quarter pound I just gauge it there they vary it's only when I want it dead on that I measure um, that I weigh so I got that inside nice I want to do a little um, swirly so I'm just going to go in with my fingers and compress to the center hit the middle and then pull out and do you see there's a little swirl a little swirly that'll be there let's compress our rim and I think this one is pretty done I might flare out and flare it out and I've got a lot of clay on the bottom that's to help support a bit of the um, bowl so let's flare this out I'm going to use a red rib and my fingers on the inside and then I'm pressing in with the red rib so we did this nice little and Maria's garden sculpture class is hand building I just wanted to let everybody know okay so that's a nice bowl that would be a good bowl. Now we could add texture to this bowl later after we alter it. I'm going to take some of this away. There's a lot here. This clay is really much drier than I like to throw with. There. Let's cut it off the wheel. Be careful of my wrist. This is the, I'm going to throw one more bowl and that's the last thing I'm going to throw until after I have surgery on both my hands and have recovered. So you all are seeing history. You're gonna see the very last thing Jessica Putnam Phillips throws until my surgery. The hands will not look the same because when I come back from surgery, I'll have two giant scars on the inside of my palms, but I will have hands that work. And I have to tell you, and those of you who have um, any hand issues, you know where I'm coming from. It has been a, a long, long struggle um, so I'm excited to have the surgery it's less than a week to my first one and then we'll be on our way to have brand new hands I'm gonna tell my surgeon if he wants to give me like bionic hands I would not be opposed like he can hook me up I would love that you throw on plastic bats since and you have since the early 80s Yes, yeah, so Studio Pro Bats um, has some really great plastic ones, and we're giving some away today, I believe. So you want to change from cone 10 to cone 6. You never thought you'd hear the words come out of your mouth, <laughs> but the colors, the transfers, the colors are different. The transfers you can use at cone 10. Um, so I learned firing reduction cone 10 wood and gas fired kilns raku kilns and i made my own clay made my own glaze that's how i i learned but over the years i have really transitioned i use all clays all temperatures um i don't really i have my own gas kiln but i don't really fire it much anymore i fire mostly to cone six i am going to do a few low fire things um after surgery when i come back i'm going to be doing some low fire more sculptural decorative things in my in my studio plan so that'll be happening then all right let's throw another one do I have a chart for suggested weights on clay share I don't know if I put that up I have from just my own experience a card handwritten card in my studio that has all that on it. Um, you know, I'll have to see if it's not on there. I'll add that. Kev, make, can you write that down for me to put a note? Like, make a note. Take a note <laughs> that I want to do a weight and measure chart. Um, because when you're starting out, and, and even if you've been making, it's nice to keep track of what sizes you like to use. So this bowl is two and three quarters pound clay, what I have here. The other one was two and a half.
that's what I use for like a ramen bowl, what I use for a small serving bowl, a salad bowl, ice cream sundae bowl. No, that's a little big, but you could. All right, so we're compressing this down. Yeah, we'll get that. This is a Bailey wheel. Yes, it is. I love Bailey. When I was a student, I won a scholarship from the art professors, got to pick a student to give $500 to. And I, but you had to use it for equipment. You had to use it for pottery equipment. And it didn't have to be all the cost you could chip in. So I used my, and it was an honor. I won an honor, it's called. So um, I used my $500 to go towards a wheel. And I looked, I've thrown on Brent's, I've thrown, I learned on the Lockerbie kick wheel. Um, and I had never actually used a Bailey wheel, but I had seen them online. I had checked out their website. And so I used, I put that money towards the wheel. The wheel cost more at the time. I think it was $900 for a Bailey wheel. They're a bit more now. So this would have been 2003, four, um, when I bought my first Bailey Pro. And I love it. I really love it. I would probably would not buy a, another wheel unless it was like this, this design. I love the splash pan enclosed and this Bailey wheel has lasted me and I use it a lot. It's a little, it's not the quietest wheel. You probably hear it. If you want a whisper quiet, there's the Shimpo whisper. I think that's who makes the whisper. And it's a very quiet wheel. So I'm compressing and setting the bottom. Actually just compressing, we haven't set it yet. I wanna pull the walls up a little bit first. Hitting that ball of clay, it hurts my hands, yes. You know it. Um, I, my hands hurt all the time, so it's just part of it. It's just, will they work? That's my big question. Soon that'll be over though, folks, so we don't have to worry about it anymore. I'm making this a little taller and bold than the other one. Compress, and now let's start to widen it a little. We're slowing down. You don't want to go too fast when you're throwing bowls. I have a tendency to go way, way too fast. You had both hands done at the end of August. No, don't screw them up, he said to you. Only hand, bold, hand building. My doctor wouldn't do both at the same time for me. I tried to convince him. He'll only do one, and you have to wait eight weeks in between. But I tried... I really tried. I was like, please, let's do them both at once. And he's like, no. And he's one of the best surgeons um, in the country. So at Dr. Pellegrini, Dartmouth-Hitchcock Medical Center, uh, orthopedic surgeon, if you need hand surgery, I'm telling you, Dartmouth is a bit of a drive, but my hands are really important to me, so I am going there for surgery. And he is uh, amazing. He knows what I do for a living, and he knows how important my hands are, so he's good, and I'm happy. <laughs> so let's go ahead and shape the outside of this. Oh, I don't think I said I was setting the bowl. I like to keep compressing the rims on the bowls or they'll get away to get away from you. All right, so I think we're almost ready to do the inside here. Compress. Both at once. Uh, you trying to get out of moving by to the new house, right? Um, yes, I am. That's what it is. I'm trying to get out of it. All right, so I'm shaping the outside, and then I'll go in and shape the inside. And this is a red rib. 
And now we're going to go ahead and shape the side all the way down to the floor. I want that nice curve in here. And I'm using the red rib because it's the softest one that Cheryl Mud Tools makes. Cheryl Mud Tools is not a sponsor. Um, they're too busy to do it with us. We asked and they're another group that was um, not available because of Inseca. So maybe next year we'll plan to find a way to get them on board. But you can get Cheryl Mud Tools from Clay Skates Pottery and I believe they are part of the discount. So there is a code. So I just did the inside and I hope the camera was set so you could see that. I'll show you again. Just coming down the side. And that's just setting that curve there. And now I want to do my swirl. You don't have to do a swirl. But I want to, so I'm just going to come in to the center. When I get to the center, I'm going to then pull back a little deeper, putting a little more pressure on. And if your swirl is a little too deep, I'm just going to go with my sponge and soften it. I want it there, but I don't want it to be really big. And I think that's, that's it for this, this one here. Um, we could do, uh, do we want to do another flare on this? Maybe we'll do a baby flare. Let's just wrap the rim over a little, not a lot. Just like that. I'm always leaning to the side so that I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, like that. Okay, so that's two bowls thrown. They will shrink 12%. Um, you know, if we used our calipers and measured and then our shrink ruler, we would be able to see exactly how wide this bowl would be after it's been fired. So if you knew you needed to make a bowl that was six inches wide, you would be able to do that with calipers and your shrink ruler. And I showed you using the shrink ruler yesterday for hand building. And, and I'll probably do another shrink ruler demo and we can do it with wheel thrown when we do that one. What is setting the bottom? Setting the bottom is when I am coming in and I'm kind of compressing. It's my own term. I don't know if anybody else says it, but it's where I come down the side with the rib and bring it to the bottom. I'm like setting this, it's setting the shape of the bottom with a nice curve. So um, it could be called setting the curve too, if you want to. But that's what I do. So this one is a, not a bad bowl. Let's alter, let's get some altering on. I got two bowls over here. So this is the, the little um, back gripper pad thing that I show you all how to make. It's so easy though. You don't honestly don't need the tutorial, but it's nice to have it there. Line this up on its bat pins. And now I'm going to alter this, but I want to decide, usually I will just eyeball it. I won't, won't go ahead and be precise, but I want to be precise. And so I've got these MKM decorating discs. And when you get these, they're clear. And they have two because one is odds and one is evens. So if you want 12 marks, you have a 12 and you can make a tick mark at everywhere there's a 12. It's a little crazy, right? If you made a 12 sided bowl or an eight sided bowl or six, but doing evens is really easy eyeballing it, but doing odds is not. So we are going to do odds. Look at that. And you get both. We are giving away MKM gift certificates all week long. So, um, or is today our last day of MKM? The MKM, is today the last day? Or is it all week? How many? I believe we've got MKM all week. All week. Whoa, MK MKM really stepped up. They really did. Um, so we're going to do odd size. Let me flip it over because I actually have it on backwards. So we can do a five-sided bowl or a seven-sided bowl. Let's see if anybody wants to suggest. All right, someone's asking about my baby kiln. It is the DLH11-DX, and it's 11 inches wide, 
and it's uh, about mm, half a cubic foot, I think. It's a good tiny kiln, but I'm telling you, if you're thinking about getting a kiln, you should look at the E14S. It's a more, more for all purpose things. It'll fit bigger things, it'll fit dinner plates. It's a little bigger. So when I set the side bottom with the red rib, curve side up or at an angle, um, it's actually straight at it, slight, slightly angled, curved side, the big curve down, not the, um, see, let me show you, big curve down. And I, it's not straight in, it's slightly angled, just, just slightly, but not a lot. They need to come up with teeny cameras that are articulating that I can put in here. Okay, so let's mark our bowl. What do we wanna do? A seven-sided bowl? I think so. So here's the seven. I'm going to make a little tick mark. There's a number seven, you see, and everywhere there is, I can use my needle tool and draw a line. Need to move this a little. Do, 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 do. Got that one. Let's get the seven. Because it would be near impossible to get an even seven-sided bowl, I think, eyeballing it. This is the way, the way. Do I have this one done? Here, Doop. And these little tick marks I'm making with my needle tool will just smooth away after we have made our marks. Um, I am old school and I'm just gonna use a wooden rib. This is a dirty girl's rib. So to make them easier and cut off the corners, I need to do that. You're absolutely right. I just opened the package this morning. I've actually never used this pack of them. I had, a, I had some a long time ago and I don't know what I did. So I think this one, we're gonna do um, an indent right here. So we're just gonna indent the piece. Now, if your piece is a little too dry, it can crack. I'm just gonna get this wet on the inside. I threw these yesterday. I threw them last night. After Clay Share Con was over, I was out here throwing. That's what I do. An indent everywhere there is a line. So I can have a seven sided bowl. In my class on altering, throwing and altering bowls, I do not use the MKM decorating disc. I don't, I do it freehand. I think I missed Mark. I need one here. I missed one. How do you do that? Oh no, I dropped it on the ground. Now it's gonna be filthy. Studio floor. All right, now let's line it back up. It actually isn't hard. You just get one of the sevens lined up. Get the disc in the center. Get my sevens lined up. I missed the seven because it wasn't marked with a black line. There we go. Okay, I got it. I'll do this one here. And I switched to the rounded side of the rib. It pushes in a bit more. I'm gonna go back over the others. And I would say this is a very soft leather hard. Very soft leather hard. Because you see I'm able to manipulate it, but I am not cracking it. And it's not, it's holding its shape after I do it. And I'll trim this later. I haven't trimmed them yet. I'm just pushing in with the rib. And these rib marks that I'm making, I will smooth with the sponge in a minute. So I think that's going pretty good there. I don't know if you want to see the top view. See how that looks. We can check our bowl. I'm just going to use my fingertips to really bring it in. But look, it's a perfect seven-sided bowl. Perfect. Perfect. And so we just smooth the rim out. I smooth out the lines here because I, I don't want any roughness. I don't mind the line being there. But I don't want that roughness. And if you wanted to take it a step further, let's see where we are on time. Um, you take your finger and you draw up the inside of each one of these little lobes right here. And that just adds a little more volume to that side there.
It's really cool. Um, I got one more we're going to do super quick because we've got a studio tour planned in five minutes. <laughs> I got five minutes. So let me grab. Come here, little bowl. This one. It's a little different bowl, but still rather similar. Line it up. And let me grab my odds. We're going to do a five-sided bowl. This one will do five. Get my needle tool back. There it is. So you just put this in the center, and then where's our five? There's our five. 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 So if you don't mind, you know, for years I didn't use this. Use this. I just eyeballed it. I only did even. Most of my bowls are like a four-sided bowl or an eight-sided bowl. I got them all. One, two, three, four, five. Yes. So um, you don't have to use these, but if you want to do an an odd, you do want to use these because if not, you're not going to be able to get it. So we're going to do a pinch. And yes, I know I marked the outside. We'll smooth that out. I mean, I can smooth it out now. And then you're just going to pinch and pull. And we're just going to kind of, if you've ever made a spout, we're basically making a spout, but it's deeper. See what we just did right there. And we'll do another one right here. We'll smooth away the mark. It goes right here. Yeah, I can answer a question. So Katie says, I don't know why, but all of my bowls have lots of ridges. Do you know what I'm doing wrong? So like from your throwing marks, from your fingers? So it's not a matter of a wrong, I would say. But um, I use a sponge, and you notice how I use a rib to smooth everything out? Because I want a very smooth surface. Next time I do this marking, uh, I'm going to do it so that the mark is not on the outside like that. I'm just going to make a little mark on the inside. So I would suggest try throwing with a sponge if you're not yet. That helps to smooth everything out. Also, um, you can use a rib and smooth it off before you are done. So that will get rid of any of the throw marks. Um, you know, it's really hard to get a nice even thrown piece, smooth sided, throwing with just your fingers, you need to use tools. So definitely get yourself a rib and that will help. All right, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to really accentuate the point that we have here. I'm going to accentuate the point. So we're making like a star bowl, right? So we did that. And then I'm going to do it one step further and I'm just going to do a little side fancy. So although it's a five-sided bowl, it's a five-sided bowl that has a little fancy loop on it. Come back wheel. Sometimes go too fast. So I don't know if you guys can really see what I'm doing here. I'm holding the side right where I made those little indents with the point, and then I'm pulling out. So this is a, a much fancy or er, altered bowl. And again, these all need to be trimmed, which my plan is to trim them in a few minutes during the trimming broadcast that I'm going to be doing at 3 o'clock. So not in a few minutes, in a few hours. But there it is, altered bowls. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, that's gorgeous. Mm, happy with that one. <laughs> all right. So easy, really, to do. And fun and unique bowls. So you can make a wheel thrown shape that looks a little fancy from it, from, um, you know, not just a plain circle bowl, which is fine too, but you know. Will I side the, show the side and top view at the same time? Can we pull them both up? We can, Kev. Uh, side and top, no, I can't do that right now. You can't do side and top together? Not, not, not the way that I'm cabled in right now. No, but um, he could do one and then the other. And so it's just a matter of making sure your little loopies are the same size all the way around. So you just fiddle with it a tiny bit. 
And you can actually flare it out if you want to press the bowl out a little. You can do that too, so you can stretch the clay. Widens the bowl a little bit. There, I'm done. Not gonna mess with it anymore. Um, I will bring it up to the front camera. I'm gonna yep. switch over. Okay. And I will show you the top view <laughs> and the side view. All this will get trimmed away later today when we're trimming. But look at that, that shape. Fancy pants right there. All right, everyone, we're gonna and a few minutes early so we can do a studio tour from the Patels. They uh, have their own studio and they sent us in a studio tour so we wanna share that with you. And I think, um, yes, we do this with hand-built bowls too. You can do it with any bowl, any bowl at all. It doesn't have to be wheel thrown. This is just the way we did it today. That is all. And um, that's, all, that's all I have for this. And we are going to jump to the Patel Studio Tour. Then we'll be back with Printing Studio Tour with Debbie Delacruz. Thanks for joining me, guys. Very big barn. Now we'll go inside. We have some solar panels, which we have new ones for our house. So we had a tornado come by that knocked out all our trees. Which and there now are the trees now. We get full sun on our barn for solar. So this is inside. There is upstairs with storage which is just kind of a loft area. And then we have our area, which we already did last year. So you come in and you have our makeshift clay station, which has just a plywood board with some canvas over it right now. I have an actual wedging table in our garage. Then we have our extruder and our counter spaces. And then some extra tables that usually sit here and put our bisque and glaze work on one table. Then we have some shelving for work that's finished, but that's all in our garage right now. We also have some storage under each counter. Lots of storage. So we have everything from extra kiln, kiln solves in that little box to the, that white box. We have our tools for our extruder. Then we have our clay recycled containers at the bottom here too. Then our GR pottery forms and plaster forms with our extra banding wheels. And then we have a pegboard, pegboard wall. Yeah, pegboard. Wall on top that has all these stuff. He just emptied out a space to add more things on later on. So that's the workstations. And then we have storage on top also. So there's no, some like, chemical or some yeah. chemicals for glazing, mason scenes, all other random stuff that we just end up putting on top. We hope to start messing with glaze chemistry soon. Yeah. When we so, fix our glazing. Then we have all our rolling pins, and extras down here. We did have just plain plywood tabletops first. We sanded everything down, put a stain on it, and then put some poly acrylic over it, a couple coats to make nice tabletops to work yeah, on. I think I could read we some usually do if use you do a little, little bit of board to work on top oh, of yeah. it. Oh, We have our, all our templates, some tile cutters, and then we have all our glazes. So our glazes are currently on this works table. This is my side. That's my brother's side. And we just got some more glazes in the mail. Just got some more glazes to add to that. But eventually, our glazes are all going to end up on that table. And that will be our glaze chemistry station. So that will be our glaze station. So this will just be my workstation. We have some cabinets underneath that we took from my parents' closets because they got new ones made. So we just have some stamps, cookie cutters, all silicone mold and wooden. textured wooden stamps, no wallpaper for texture. And then we just have a, ca a cabinet full of test tiles because I don't know exactly where to put them yet. This is what I want. Yeah. So 
So this is him using one of the wooden steps. My mom got those from India. Bombay. From India from him for him. There's a whole bunch of them. Then mm -hmm. we have everything hanging up. And we also have some cabinets down here. So I keep all my small underglazes here. All my luster and gloves and stuff in the top cabinet. Then we have all extra glazes and my mask in here. Put some templates and forms down here. Also made a little whiteboard. Don't really write Chalk on board. it. Chalkboard. But don't really write on it. I put some glazes that I might need to buy. We have our rolling cart. Our kiln is outside this door. So this barn door opens up all the way. And we get to the outside covered area. And we have our kiln back here. So our kiln is all the way back here. So we use that rolling cart to bring it out or fill up the kiln. Then roll it back inside. We are in Florida, but it is cold today. So we have a nice big area. Eventually, sometimes you put you could put a table out here and do your glazing outside. We have our slab roller. I also have an extra wheel down here, which is one I found for only $25 and I me and my dad fixed it up and now it's working fine. We have that wheel for our GR pottery forms. Of course we have our heater because it's like 40 degrees outside. And yeah, pretty much it. I work usually over here. And then we need to keep our foam and our wood pieces down here for our boards. And all extra bisque that we haven't glazed yet goes down here so we can grab it easily. My brother even has a glass station and he filed all his glass away. So he was making stained glass yeah, for a little while. He paused to do some more ceramics. That's pretty much it. That's my brother. Hi. This is me. That's us. Us. Yep. So then we'll go to the garage in a second and go see the garage setup, which I have to walk all the way back to the house to see. Now we're in the garage. It's kind of messy because we just had a show. So there's all our box and our supplies. So my wheel, I put a little sheet around it to catch any trimmings and anything flying off. See all these lines is from smoothing out the bottoms. The liquid just flies off. And then we have the wedging table me and my dad made. So we made this last year, right when the pandemic started. Me and my brother got bored because we were waiting for plaster. So then we ended up painting it. So we have the pineapples on it. We have two different sides for brown clay, for white clay. I usually put a piece of plywood over the side I'm not using currently. And of course I have a white board to write whatever. This is actually a jar that I threw that my teacher carved my dog on because he has cancer. So, and then we have my adjustable work table. These are one of those husky tables from Home Depot. It goes up and down based on your height. Yeah, and that's basically all I have in the garage. I just have my wheel, my wedging table, and a work table. We keep all of our ready or everything that's glazed in this cabinet because usually we're taking it in and out for shows so we leave it in the garage so it's easier for us to handle rather than taking it back and forth from the barn so we are designated one full cabinet to put all our stuff in so we just try to keep it in that cabinet to keep it clean yep pretty much it hope you enjoyed our studio